Aging boomers with a wrinkle here and a few sags there have caused a boom in the cosmetic dermatology and laser skin care business. Dr. Frances Jang is a dermatologist who has treated hundreds of patients, boomers and younger. She is one of the partners along with her plastic surgeon partner in a clinic called Skin Works. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Frances Jang to Studio 4 to tell us more. Morning. I assume business is booming in spite of the threat of the HST. Well, I think we're doing okay. This this kind of treatment is certainly becoming much more mainstream now mm -hmm. as it's more accepted by the population. It's It's been going on, this evolution, for the last decade plus. Well, and women are now talking about it, and yeah. men are talking about it before yeah. you hid out for weeks. Yeah. You know, well, that, and then you lied if somebody asked you if you had any work done. Well, that's the beauty of non-surgical. So there's not quite the degree of commitment um, in terms of downtime. So the procedures are much less invasive mm -hmm. now. The other nice thing about it is they can be done step by step, so it's a more gradual change. What are the latest and the greatest uh, treatments, in non-surgical non treatments in skin care? Well, I think we've come to understand that the aging face is really comprised of three Ds. So degeneration of the skin through sun damage as well as genetics, uh, but also that of deflation of the face. So we lose fat, muscle, and bony tissue so the poor skin has nowhere to go so we start to develop these wrinkles and furrows which are uh, generally deemed unattractive and okay. undesirable. So we lose bone too? We do. So you can Not see that. Not just in our elbows? No. Darn. So we, everything shrivels. Mm -hmm. So the poor skin starts to hang and of course that begins to make us look unhealthy and tired. Mm -hmm. So we see more and more people even in their 30s uh, starting to address these changes early on in a non-surgical way. Very much so. We were talking in the green room that uh, my friends in Quebec, my female friends in Quebec, have been tweaking since they were in their 30s and 40s. Yeah. Those of us in the West, I don't know, are a little behind. Well, I think that's true. I think there's a, a difference regionally um, with people's perspective of how they want to look. Mm -hmm. And I, I think on the West Coast, we generally want to look fairly natural and, and many of us go out without makeup, et cetera, uh, during the day. Right. But So it often starts with something like a little Botox. Um, in between the eyebrows for this furrowed to ease the furrowed look in between the eyebrows and then it can go on um, certainly well certainly as a dermatologist mm -hmm. uh, it, it always starts with skin care so we're using sunscreens and and now topical antioxidants like vitamin C and we we're just alluding to the new coffee berry which Off is a very the air powerful coffee berry I was reading about that yes. and mother from mother's herbs in North End says yeah. you should take coffee berry yes it's the top one of the best antioxidants they've been able to nicely measure the antioxidant activity of coffee berry actually on the skin and it's much more powerful than using something like vitamin C which has been used for some mm -hmm. time now so there is a product line now that has a cream form of coffee berry and it's called Revali really? and uh, so we're enjoying the benefits of that very and much. do you believe that you can get benefit from outside in as well as inside out I think that there's some studies that show that for the skin anyway it's more beneficial to actually put it on the skin we showed that with vitamin C so while there are, are internal benefits of taking vitamin C if you want to address and have the maximum benefit on your skin, you actually want to be putting it on mm -hmm. your skin. As you say, what most people uh, want is to look fresh yes. and alive. <laughs> when, you know? Yeah, I uh, think. I, we know we're not 20 anymore, well, but I, to be vibrant and have healthy looking skin. And yes, I think that's true. People want to look. Not too many sags. Yeah, they want to look like they've just come back from a month's vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I get that all the time. I don't want to look unnatural, I, I don't want to look like I've had surgery. I just want to look a little bit fresher. Can right. you do this for me with these non-surgical uh, uh, tools that we have now? And so basically we're talking about Botox, we're talking about the use of fillers, and so getting back to that, what we are talking about is really sugar-like molecules that are synthesized in a lab. They resemble chemically things that are already found in the middle layer of our skin, so they're in a way natural, and they certainly are very natural looking. And they're injected, and okay. they plump up and revolumize, and it addresses that. Um, uh, deflation that I was talking about earlier. So in a way, if you look at it as when you're young, your face is like a beach ball. Okay, It's round, it's inflated, and then as we age, not only does the envelope become a little bit flabby, mm -hmm. but it's because the air or our soft tissues are being lost and you see this deflation sure. and sagging happening. And if you're born with cheekbones, that's a good thing because it seems to hold it up just a little better. It does. If you have a more oval face, it's more football-like, yes. then I assume it sags a little more. You're the doctor, not I. But we can create cheekbones now. So that's the fun thing that I'm doing now is actually creating cheekbones 
positions in the office with some of these fillers. So we can not only fill in grooves and furrows, we can actually build out a cheekbone where it was not there before. And when you build a cheekbone in someone's face, how long does it last? So the thing with these products that's good and perhaps bad right. is that they are uh, viewed as being semi-permanent. So in the old days when we were using collagen, it would last a month, three months. It was very frustrating for both the patient and the physician. Now with the advent of these hyaluronic acid fillers, uh, which have been around probably in Canada for almost a decade and certainly for more than that in Europe and the United States, we have found that although theoretically they will break down slowly in the body, that there is some collagen um, stimulation with repeated applications. So, for example, if we were going to fill, this is a common area, this sort of smile line mm -hmm. area or the nasolabial fold as we'll call it, if you do it two or three times, you'll, feel, you'll see that the patient will get a prolongation of the effect. So, while they may need a touch-up, a year and a half, two years later, and you remember you're continuing to age too, so yes. it's not just that the product is going away. Mm -hmm. um, you'll find that after the second or third application that it may be three or four years out until they need a little touch up, but of course there's other areas to use the filler. I'm sure there yeah. are. Let's take a look at some before and afters, and you can tell me how you analyze the face, what you sure. do. Let's take a look at Janet. She's in her 50s. Um, and look at the difference. Well, yeah. So, so Janet is in her fifties, and she has some very typical changes um, going on in her face. She's got great, great facial cheekbone or architecture to her face, and she doesn't really need a lot to make her uh, look much more natural and relaxed. She's had a combination treatment, so that's the direction we're going as well. We're not just putting in a little bit of Botox in the upper third of her face. So where we've put it in her is in between her eyebrows, the Botox, on her horizontal forehead lines. We've put some around her crow's feet. And, um, and so what that has resulted in is a smoothing of the forehead lines and this tightening of the skin. You can see it. The actual eyebrow is a little bit elevated mm -hmm. by about one or two millimeters, so her eyes look a little bit more opened up and refreshed. Now, we can't really appreciate in the, because this is a still, but if you were to talk to Janet, if it's artfully done, the Botox will not be giving her a paralyzed look. It'll be very animated, she'll be, she'll be soft and relaxed when okay. she's speaking. She'll because have a little bit of wrinkles. That look Absolutely. Is it's not so on. not attractive. It, it's, not on for me anyway. You know, Maybe some people like to look yeah. like a wax yeah. statue, but yeah. I, I don't think it's attractive, and yeah. you certainly don't want to be yeah. Botox within an inch of no. your and life. <laughs> in the uh, middle part of her face and in the uh, lower part of her face, she would have been uh, augmented or enhanced with the fillers. So to fill out... The dermal filler? This with is the, the dermal more natural filler. substance? This is a natural substance that's placed underneath the skin to lift and revolumize and re-inflate, but in a very natural mm -hmm. way. A lot of people... Uh, are very cautious and think they'll look puffed up or squared off or heavy. But if it's right. done well, it's a very natural And look. what do you do about uh, sagging necks, crepey necks, rooster neck? She says, her, whose grandson said to her, Baba, your throat is really old. <laughs> so that is the area where there's a little bit more challenge non-surgically. So depending on the degree of uh, severity or maturity of the neck, uh, we early on certainly can Botox if there's a lot of sun damage, we can laser it, and we can uh, we can also do something called thermage, which is a uh, radio frequency procedure, but much like a laser procedure. Mm. So if you have a thermage on the neck or the face, you can put thermage on the face. Use thermage on the face too. Yes. Uh, what's the downtime? Does it hurt? 